Hello everyone and welcome back. We are going to continue on this little garden shed page from Worlds of Flowers today and I'm going to be doing the little top center shelf with the little ball of twine. So it's a nice and quick one that you can probably get done in one setting. So let's go. I'll be using my Polychromos pencils as usual. I have listed all of the pencils down in the description box below. Now as this is a pretty small shelf, I've decided I'll do the whole thing in real time for you. It just makes it easy for you guys to follow along and nothing is taking overly long so it won't be too tedious to watch. I'm also structuring this video to be easy to follow if you're a beginner. So I'm going to do most of my blending here by using my lighter color first and then work my way up into the darker shades. I just find this is an easier way to start out, especially if you're a beginner or if you are only using polychromos for the first time or you still haven't quite gotten used to it yet, especially if you've been used to using something like Prismacolor, which is a very different medium. So this way you can get used to your polychromos, you can learn a lot about how to build up your layers and get a really good result.
So going in now with my red violet, I'm really going to start adding in some shadows here. I will, at the very end of this video, add in more shadows, probably using a either dark sapia or one of the darker greys. But I always like to have a good layer of sort of our base colours underneath that first because it will shine through and that way you're not just looking at a grey, a sort of plain grey shadow. There's always going to be a little bit of colour in there. I'm just going to go in now again with my coral and then again with my burnt carmine and just add another few layers and then I'll probably do just a last blend I think with my beige or red just to sort of soften up the, uh, the lighter areas without it adding any more sort of any more sort of colors or any more shadows to those by going in too dark. Thank you. 
I've had a few questions about what sharpener I use so I thought I should quickly show you that so I have a Stettler mask and it's a hand crank one like a tabletop one it takes a good size uh, variety of pencils and I found it really really good it's never really I don't think it's ever cracked one of my pencils and you're getting a really nice sharp point for it so I thought I'd just show you how how this one works if you haven't had one before for those of you that have I think it's a Dale 133 this one seems to be quite similar to that one and I'm just really enjoying this little sharpener so as you can see really nice sharp point there I do have another one I can show you that in a different video um, that makes like a really long point but um, this is the one that I use probably about 99% of the time so this is what the box looks like I bought this here in Australia at Officeworks and I try to remember how much it was I think it was sitting around maybe 50 Australian dollars ish so but I found it way um, sort of that all the sharpness they had lots of different sharpness and stuff so you can definitely find them there <laughs> little ball here of thread of some sort I was tossing up whether or not I'm going to make it like a ball of yarn or a ball of twine however being that I'm pretty certain this is a garden shed and that's what I'm treating it as I'd say it would be some sort of twine or something that you would tie up some plants with or something like that so I'm going to go in with greys and maybe some browns or orchid tones to this one and possibly even some dark sapia for the um, the darker shadows um, and just sort of treat it as a ball of sort of natural looking twine. Thank you. 
I ended up going with a raw umber rather than the ochres and the browns. I just think this will work yeah, really well together with the warm greys that I'm using and have a really nice and natural look to it.
So I'm going to go in with my dark sepia where I want all my darker shadows to be. So especially here underneath on the right hand side. And then I'll probably, I might add it so sort of where some, some of those sort of bigger overlaps are. Not in between every single strand of thread but you know sort of where, where there's larger overlaps. Now you can go in slightly darker than what it looks like I'm doing here just because the camera when I'm videoing tends to make things look a little bit lighter so when you see the final picture at the end you're going to see that it's a bit darker everything is a whole lot darker than what it kind of looks like when I'm in the middle of making this and videotaping it so go in a little bit darker for your shadows that way you're going to have a nicer contrast between your lights and your darks. If you are enjoying these videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and are enjoying it as well, please consider subscribing and you'll get notified when I post new videos.
So I wanted to bring in some slightly new colours, so for my darker blue here I'm going to go in with my Prussian blue rather than my indigo that I tend to be using just to get something just a little bit brighter and I quite like the how it goes with the ultramarines.
at this point here I'd taken a little break and when I came back there was really cloudy outside so I had to put my ring light up and as you can see that does give a bit of a shine to the pencils making it a little bit harder for you guys to read the pencil name but I've been trying to make sure that you can see it properly so I've just had to have a little bit of a play with the settings on my editing program I had to add a little bit of shadows just to try and make it actually look like the way it does in real life because the ring light made everything look really really pale and you couldn't really see much shading at all but this should help so hopefully you won't have any problems following along
Now I will do those little pokey up bits on the top there but I'll wait with them until I get my jelly roll pencil, not pencil, pen out and I'll just do a little white dot in each of them. Now this is quite hard to see, it's actually the deep cobalt green if you are having troubles. That ring light just makes it really hard for that gold, those gold lettering to, letterings to show up. So I hope you find the right colour. So I'm just going to make these little lilies white, so I'm going to be using my warm greys in here just to add a little bit of definition and shading and then at the end when we put our jelly roll down we will get rid of those white outlines. So at this point I did forget to do those little pollen stems poking up inside the, the flower but I do get onto them a bit later on and I used one of the, I think it was one of the Naples yellows or one of the yellow ochres. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, they're fairly similar.
So I'm going to go over everything again now with my dark sapia and just really darken up those shadows. It's just really going to make everything come to life, make you get a lot of depth to your picture and um, sort of finish everything off really nice before we add in our white or rim. We're adding in our whites, but we're actually rem also removing the uh, black outlines, especially on the left hand side of each item. Now, because I did have to change the settings a little bit um, when I edited, did because of the shadows this little area here is looking a little bit darker um, for you now than what it is in real life complete opposite of what usually happens so what you can do is just go in a little bit lighter now to start with and wait for that final reveal photo because that is the completely accurate representation of how dark these shadows are it's more so the little area in between the yellow pot and the red pot that just comes up really dark on camera especially when I go back over it again this is the second time not just right now you can probably go to the point where it is looking now and then just be careful when you add more shadows later on
it is time to get my trusty Sakura Jelly Roll 05 out. This is the finest tip of the Jelly Rolls and it's perfect for doing these outlines. Especially because you're not getting too much paint out at once so you can still sort of see the outline but it's much more muted and gives us much better shape and uh, highlights. So on this little cactus here, I'm not completely going in with a straight white line. I'm kind of just dotting little spots down here and there and letting some of the black kind of shine through a little bit more. So I'm just going to also go in here on these little flowers, especially up the top where the highlight is hitting. And then we'll leave the underside slightly darker.
and there you go I think we are all finished now with this picture I hope you've enjoyed following along today I sure enjoyed having you here and there you go so here is the final reveal and you can just take a look at where the shadows are and how dark they are and then you can adjust yours to uh, to suit so i wish you all a colorful day don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet and i can't wait to see you again next time